Hey everyone. So last week we talked a little bit about uh, Explore, Exploit, Sustain as a model for grooming the work of an organization and stepping into the space of more experimentation and developing the systemic kind of processes of a learning organization. We talked about this as a method for how organizations learn. I want to build on that this week and talk about your core change team. So that, that basic model around a, a series of um, or, or pieces of work that we are exploring and experimenting with, that idea of what's the smallest thing we can do to test that the, the thing we want to do is going to have the impact that we, that we expect it to, um, that, that space of exploration, um, followed by essentially a prototyping phase where having found that the idea has got some traction and our method for solving that might actually have some impact, we then want to prototype and contextualize for our organization. And then assuming that all goes well and we kind of iron out the kinks, then moving that into standard sort of operating procedure, sustaining that within our organization, supporting it as the way that we do things around here. Your requirements for the capabilities of your team are going to change depending on where you are in that process. So what I like to work with is this idea of developing a core change team. That is a group of people who start at the, the space of exploration and then have some level of courage through to taking that idea all the way through into, into operations. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty straightforward setup in terms of being able to start organizations down this path of continual learning. Um, you know, putting, pulling together a team is very familiar to us. Pulling together a group of people to try and implement change is super familiar, right? It fits in with a lot of the way that we work. And it's, I find it's a helpful step between uh, where we are today and then getting further down the track to that place of more distributed decision making and teams starting to make decisions about change on the front line and, and at their place of work. Sometimes that can be a big leap to make. And so this model of explore, exploit, sustain, and a core change team that has some carriage of those ideas, I find really, really helpful for a lot of my clients. So the idea behind the core change team is, who do we need in the room? What skill sets, what capabilities do we need in the room to be able to craft work from the inception of an idea all the way through to opera operationalization? <laughs> Now, historically, we've done that through project teams, and that, that's great. Uh, you'll, you'll probably find a lot of similarity in some of the capabilities that, that I talk about within this core change team. Uh, but, but the focus is on a group of people who are kind of the leading edge of the, of the wave, right? We always have those early adopters. It's these people that like to chase the shiny objects. So we want to get them activated and on the front foot and working in this space around exploration. And then as we progress through into that mode of sustaining within the operation, then the mix of people and, uh, and personalities and skill sets is necessarily going to change through that process as well. And by the time we're finished, when something is in sustain, uh, sustainment in our business, then it's probably going to be sitting with those people who they're a little, they're a little less shiny object attracted. They're more uh, in that space of the reliability and the capability to just keep things ticking over. And people naturally have personality types that fit in all of these spaces. So there's somewhere for everybody, right? So within the core change team, what are the capabilities we need? Well, there's four. First up, my personal favorite, um, totally biased here, coming from a project management background, but this idea of lean PMO. So if you've worked with me, you'll know that a project management office or a project management organization is largely the vehicle by which I drive transformation in businesses for my clients. Uh, Lean PMO is about less of that traditional project management mindset around control and the iron triangle and, and those sorts of things, and more focus on those aspects of project management around the need to create visibility, facilitation, coaching mindset. How do we how do we enhance visibility across the organization so that we can decentralize the control? So that's the first capability that you're looking for in this team. And that might not be one person. 
that might be a range of people. You might have data insight analysts, you might have project managers, you might have people that are just really creative and good with visual tools. Maybe you've got an in-house artist. But that idea of lean PMO is, is a really, it's emphasizing uh, some of those skill sets that uh, we're taught as project managers, but in that way of enhancing visibility, facilitating the flow, uh, and, and that coaching kind of mindset. So that's the first capability. Second on the list are your designers. And your designers are the custodians of the experimental method. There's a great irony in organizations that we are terrified of this word experimentation, and yet the scientific method is all about designing a hypothesis, testing that hypothesis, being quite rigorous about proving or disproving that hypothesis. Um, so irony aside, the designers have the custodianship of how do we develop experimentation within our organizations. These are the people that have that natural ability to understand how to build test and learn systems, how to craft work in a way that we can learn as we go, how to break things down and navigate through uncertainty with just the first step and that first piece of learning. And then once we've learned from that first step, it's the next step that we want to take. So designers are the custodians of that test and learn method. They have the ability to fail fast, fail often, and help the team through accelerating that learning cycle so that we can get more quickly to understanding whether or not our idea is going to have the impact that we need it to have or that we expect it to have. Second capability. Third, our business analysts. Now business analysts are those people that have the ability to see the big picture, to see the outcome, and then to break work down into small chunks. It's a really heavy emphasis here on understanding strategically and conceptually where we're going and then how to slice and dice the work in a way that we can come up with independently valuable pieces. Obviously working very closely with designers around what's the smallest thing we can do to test our impact and then having understood that we're going to have the right impact, how do we break work down and deliver sequentially, independently, iteratively, making sure that we've got value every step of the way, we're building in those feedback loops, we're building in those opportunities to check, are we headed in the right direction, do we need to pivot, should we stop altogether? That's your business analysis skill set. And then finally, the fourth capability is around responsive tech. So we want to make sure that we've got that, particularly within IT projects, but and particularly within digital transformation, but we need that understanding of uh, technology, uh, how to move away from legacy IT structures, how to move away from that really heavy uh, kind of IT stack, how to move into more responsive architectures for our technology that enable us to experiment really quickly on the front end with our customers, be really super responsive, and at the same time, um, have that capability to keep moving in the background but probably at a slightly slower pace. So it's a little bit of knowing when to use the small cogs that can experiment really really quickly and fast and knowing when it's okay to use a slightly slower kind of mechanism for change and, and understanding what that looks like strategically, uh, understanding technology roadmaps, understanding architecture, um, building for responsiveness, service-based uh, architectures, microservices, continuous uh, integration, all of that good stuff. We need that technical capability. Um, and, and obviously there's that element of having a lot of some of these other skill sets that we're seeing around the ability to experiment, the ability to learn. We need all of that to come together in your core change team. So really, 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 really conscious. This is not four people. This could be two people. This could be 10 people. What's critical is that you've got those skill sets. What's less critical is how you get there. You want to make sure that you're building and balancing your team for these capabilities so that you have set up a group of people who can get through that experimental process uh, and that learning process quickly on the front end as you're exploring work. As you start to move into prototyping, as you start to move into sustaining in the operation, what you're going to find is that those people will naturally become less engaged because it's not quite as exciting, the shiny objects aren't quite there. Um, and so naturally their involvement, they'll, 
their involve they'll want to diminish their involvement, and that's okay because what we want to start to bring in is more of the operational kind of group of people who are um, maybe not so enamored with shiny objects, but more enamored with things like efficiencies and uh, and ongoing tweaking and massaging of our technology space and and of our business process space on a longer sort of cycle. So. At any point in the spectrum, whether we're at explore, whether we're in exploit, whether we're in sustain, we want a mix of all of these people. When we're exploring, really, really heavy involvement from our core change team. And we want to do that in the context of what's going on in the operation. So we'll have a little bit of that flavor in there too. As we move into prototyping and contextualizing that idea in our organization, then there should probably be less involvement from our core change team and more involvement from our operational, uh, functional teams because this is about how do we make it real within our environment? How do we make it real for us, for our business? And that's going to require a lot of knowledge about what's going on in our operation today. And then again, as we move into sustainment, we want to have a lot more uh, involvement from our functional teams because they're the ones that are owning this ultimately and they've been co-developing the whole way throughout. But this is now where we're just making it the way that we work around here for everybody. And naturally, our change team's involvement is going to diminish. We want to stay connected. We want to keep under, make sure that we keep that understanding of what's going on in our functional teams and what problems they need to solve. But we're probably not working quite as heavily in that space because it's in more of that operational flow. So I hope that was super helpful. Four capabilities in your core change team. Lean PMO, all about visibility. Designers, custodians of the experimental method. Business analysts, know how to slice and dice work so that we're delivering iteratively. And responsive technology, uh, responsive architecture. Those are your four capabilities. Doesn't have to be four people, but we do need to make sure that we're balancing those capabilities in our team so that we can have a really effective core change team that are helping to get that momentum and to navigate through all the uncertainty in our organization. So I hope that was useful, and wherever you are in the world today, I hope you're having an awesome, awesome day. I will see you again next week.